Hey guys, it's a beautiful day out here in Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. I love the view. We got the bridge in the background and some water. And we're looking at a really special bike here. This is an electric trike. This is the E-Velo Compass. I covered this model two or three years ago, but Evelo's actually been around as a company since 2012, which is when I started doing e-bike reviews. So it's kind of like seeing an old friend. It's neat to see some of the upgrades and improvements. One of the first things I noticed is that the basket is now aluminum alloy. I think before it was steel and that made the bike way more. And if it got scratched, you could get rust and stuff. So to me, that was a big upgrade. A uh, handlebar is steel and it's this high rise, really swept back, almost a cruiser orientation with the ergonomic grips and stuff. It's all about comfort here very approachable easy to step over the frame you don't have to balance it because it's a trike you got three wheels and one of the really cool things that Evelo has done is they've added a differential in the rear which means that your power and your braking goes to both tires so it's not just one tire is going to get worn down faster than the other and you have to worry about changing the tires and stuff i think that's fantastic i also really like the wheel size that they've chosen 24 by 2.4 so you get a lower attack angle than if this was a 20 inch wheel i love that they got the reflective sidewall stripes the trike only comes in white kind of a glossy white i think it used to be sort of a dark green but they must have just said okay let's you know the white is the most popular so let's stick with it it is completely purpose built whole bunch of wires up here because we've got the motor inhibitors from both brake levers we got a trigger throttle which is very handy especially on a, a heavier bike like this this is about 78 pounds but it has a 350 pound weight capacity up to 80 pounds in that rear basket i mean you could do all of your grocery shopping or maybe take a pet or just go to school whatever it is that you're doing out there having fun with this thing it's a pretty capable bike so back to you know the internally routed cables they stay out of the way keeps this nice and clean and open one thing they don't have is bottle cage bosses uh, a lot of times you can get kind of a, a cup holder thing for the handlebars up here some sort of aftermarket solution but i did want to call that out it's something i usually looking for and it's a mid-drive so that's neat brings weight forward keeps it low and you get a little bit of extra mechanical advantage because the motor is benefiting from the gear that you choose and this is a three speed it's got an internally geared hub right here and then you can see there's two chains and then we go into the differential it's a very fancy bike it's it's really neat to see this they're using shimano nexus that's the inter three we got the twist shifter up here so you can actually shift at standstill which is kind of convenient and that combined with the throttle combined with the shift sensor that's going to really protect your drivetrain and, and it's just going to work out well. Brakes are important too, especially you're dealing with a heavier bike. We've got these 180 millimeter mechanical disc brakes, four finger levers, so that gives you a, a better mechanical advantage when you're pulling with your, your hands. Of course, hydraulic disc brakes would be nice, but that costs a little bit more. These are going to be a little bit more adjustable. Uh, aftermarket just with your own tool set they do offer free shipping in the contiguous u.s you have to pay a little bit more for alaska or hawaii to me it's really interesting it's supposed to be almost fully assembled you got to do maybe add the handlebar up here add the pedals and uh, yeah just this nice high rise we we're talking about kind of steel might dampen some vibration non-locking but ergonomic rubber grips we got the the brake levers here and one of the other things i wanted to point out was there is that kind of locking switch right here so you can unlock them or you can lock them into position that way the bike doesn't roll away because again it's a trike there's no kickstand it's always it's always ready to go and we've got that on both sides some of the other safety features here we've got the integrated lights front and rear the rear light actually has braking and bright mode i'm going to show you that once we power the bike on but yeah just the cockpit to me it's very it's fairly adjustable this is a quill stem it goes up and down 25.4 millimeter bore on the handlebar so it's a, it's a little bit kind of classic old school compared to the new mountain bikes they're 31.8 things got a little thicker but again steel very sturdy uh you know kind of that vibration dampening if we come back down here for a second 170 millimeter these are just standard forged aluminum alloy crank arms they're kind of bbso2 specific that is the mid-drive motor here and you can't see it it's actually surrounded by this frame material it looks really nice and clean the bbso2 is very proven it's one of the older motors from bafang 500 watt rated over 800 watt peak and then these guys are telling me it's over 100 newton meters of torque 
very impressive. So plenty of power, very proven. It is a cadence sensor, and I think it's like a 12 pole. So there are like 12 sensors in there. F fairly responsive and dynamic, not quite as sophisticated as maybe like a Bosch motor or something that's measuring your rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque. This is just pedal cadence. But when you combine that with the throttle and the shift detection and stuff, it's, it's a really good setup. And the reliability is something that really stands out to me. This might be the kind of bike that, you know, you get it. It's, it's hard to take this to a shop. Uh, and then, you know, coming back to the assembly and stuff, it's so nice that they, they deliver it and, and it's mostly ready to go. It can be quite a bit of extra work to take the wheels off and stuff up front, you know, standard 100 millimeter hub spacing with a quick release, nine millimeter axle and stuff. The, the tires, the reflective sidewalls are great. I did not see puncture protection rating. So just keep, keep your eye on these, you know, don't let the pressure get too low and end up with a pinch flat or something. It'd be a lot of work to take these off. I think these are thicker, like 14 millimeter axles, pretty custom back here, especially with the differential we talked about. And then I saw this black box. I think that's actually the controller. You can see some wires running to it. And then this extra piece of framing right here that protects it from the rear, from the bottom. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty tough machine. I think if you take care of it, um, nice wide rims, 13 gauge, thicker spokes, 36 hole rims as well. We might as well talk about the, the fenders here. We just got these strips of plastic. You know, it's kind of adjustable. You can actually move this side to side. The front is a little bit more fancy. It's, it's kind of rounded. We got the plastic ends and stuff. They're both plastic, right? But um, yeah, it, it's been pretty quiet for me. It hasn't been rattling too much. These ones are just going to kind of keep the stripes from hitting your elbows as you, as you pedal or if you put your arms out side to side. And they, they just seem flexible is the way I would describe them. Nice to have, not quite as fancy. They're pretty high above the, the tires too. I guess I haven't ridden enough in the water and stuff to really get a feel for it, but they, it's better than nothing. And um, you know, with the black, they, they tie in nicely. Nice bamboo deck. We talked about the 80 pound max weight rating on this basket. It's really big, you know, it's pretty tall too. For me, that's a really exciting feature on the bike extra comfortable wide saddle here from Velo with kind of a memory foam. And then we've got a 27.2 millimeter seat post that's 350 millimeters tall. No quick release collar here. You need a tool to adjust that. But I'm, I'm calling attention to this because this one area where you could further improve comfort on the bike, you could get yourself a suspension seat post and just get a little bit more comfort. I've already got that nice upright body position and stuff. And then down here, kind of pairing with the fenders is this semi-clear plastic chain cover, which is perfect if you have a dress or you have the longer you know, kind of wide pant legs like I've got here. You don't want those to have to touch the chain and get dirty or get snagged. And then the pedals, aluminum alloy with that rubberized tread. I, I like the ones that are a little bit wider than this, but it could definitely be worse. The rubber it's not gonna scrape your shin if you slip off accidentally. It might not give you as much traction as the ones with the big thick metal nubs, but you won't scratch yourself. And they got the reflectors and everything built in. Drivetrain, 22 teeth on the sprocket back here. Uh, 40 teeth on this front chain ring, down from 42. So it's actually a little bit smaller, which I think gives you a more of a mechanical climbing advantage. I love the, the frame tubing and stuff here. I want to call out that gusset for extra stiffness so you're not getting frame flex when this thing's really loaded up with gear. You want to have that stiffness, that strength, and I just feel like they've, they've done that. They've done a really good job. This might be a speed sensor on the front wheel, by the way. There's the spoke magnet. If you ever get like a read error on the display, this is something worth checking because sometimes it gets spun around and then the, the bike's like, oh, we don't know how fast you're going. So I'm gonna call that out while we're, while we're down here. Okay, let's explore the little welcome kit that they give you. We got this charger, Sands. I'm, I'm very familiar with this charger. I've seen it from a lot of companies. Just two amp output, fairly light, about a pound and a half. Not the most compact thing, but pretty easy to replace. Probably pretty cheap to replace too. I think it's gonna take about six hours to fully charge a battery if it's completely empty. Um, but you can usually charge the lower half in just a couple hours. Uh, later, as it's starting to balance the cells, it takes longer. So, you know, it's like fast and then it slows down a little bit. The keys, you can see we got a lot of keys here. And I was a little concerned at first. I thought, oh man, you know, since they're two battery based, you have to have separate keys for both. And they said, no, it's the same key. We just give you extras. And that is so nice. It's really wonderful to be able to use just one key and handle both of the batteries. 
And then of course we got some user guides in here, a little bit about the bike, a little bit about the display. The display is really cool. I'm excited to show you that in just a second here. And it's uh, magnetic there. So I've unlocked both of the batteries or what appears to be a battery. This is actually, this is hollow. This is just sort of a placeholder to protect the, the leads and stuff. And it's kind of interesting. They give this to you when, you when you buy the bike with just one battery. In some ways it's like, that's a lot of extra plastic. But on the other hand, it's really nice that they're giving you this, this interface here so that later if you decide to get a second battery, again, $800, you can double your range. It, it's, it's just nice. I guess it's a decent solution. And I kind of wonder if you could drill a hole in this and store some stuff in it. It could be like your secret cubby and you could kind of lock it to the bike. And then this is a real battery over here. So again, about six pounds. We got a little charge level indicator right there. And then an on off switch. So, you know, if you want people to not be able to tamper with the display and mess with the throttle and stuff, you can come back here, you can turn this off and uh, just kind of makes the bike immobile. There's the charging port for the battery. One of the trade-offs here is you do have to charge the batteries separately. And the plug is a little hard to reach on both of them. I mean, the light blocks it a little bit. That's the light I was talking about. It has brake light. It's really nice, Spinningo Lineo. Um, but yeah, it does kind of creates a little bit of tightness back here. So for me, there's a bit of a just extra screwing around every time you want to charge these. Keep the batteries in a cool, dry location try to keep them from getting too much below kind of the 20%. You really don't want these to ever drain all the way. You don't want to store them in a really hot place because that's hard on the cells and, and then you're not going to get as many full charge cycles. So once you've charged the batteries and you mounted them to the bike, if these were both actual batteries, they would discharge in series. So if they don't drain evenly, it kind of drains one and then the other. Interestingly, the display will recalibrate and show you kind of a combined uh, watt hour rating total. Each pack would be rated 48 volt, 10.5 amp hours. So it's a 504 watt hours. When you have two batteries, that's over a kilowatt hour of capacity. So my estimate is that it's kind of like 18 to 35 miles per charge. And if you had two batteries, maybe you could get up to that 80 mile range kind of thing. It really depends on the, the tire pressure. If you have these really full, they're gonna be more efficient or if you're a little bit softer, how heavy the load is, how full this thing is, whether you're going up hills or through kind of softer terrain and stuff. But that's pretty good range for, a, for a, a heavier bike like this with the throttle. You could really go the distance, maybe even replace your car with this, depending on the situation. Okay, let's go ahead and boot the bike up. We'll come over here, turn the battery to on and then hold the little power button for a second. We get the nice little Evelo readout. It is branded, but this is a Bafangs display. Looks like a ambient light sensor, which is kind of fancy. Really nice readouts here. It's fairly large, even though it's a little bit more down because of the way the handlebar is set up. We got a clock, battery charge level percentage, which is much nicer than just having five blocks or something. So it's, it's a little bit more precise. And then we have our speed with a nice little readout, almost like a car or something, speedometer, trip distance, and then uh, current assist level. And it seems to reset every time you power cycle the bike, it goes back to level one, which means the throttle is hot. So if you bump this, the bike can start going unless you have the brake lever pulled because again, these have the motor inhibitors for safety. So we got assist level one. If you take it down to assist level zero, the throttle no longer works. And you're basically just riding around a heavy bike, pedal power with lights, which is kind of nice. And then we have five levels of assist. If we want to uh, change those levels of assist, you press the plus or the minus. If you want to change some of the readouts on the display, you can press that I info button. So we'll see it goes from trip distance to odometer, max speed, average speed, range, and range is so cool. Like here we are in assist level five, that's the most power. If we arrow down with the minus key to level one, it goes up to 34 miles. So you really get a sense for how far you can go and it's dynamic and I appreciate that. So then we press the I button again, calories. So it estimates how many calories we're burning and then time and back to trip distance. So it just kind of goes around in a circle. We've got that dedicated light button, which is very nice. You don't have to remember a, a series of button presses like some other e-bikes. If we hold that for a second, the display actually gets darker. So here's the lights off and here's the lights on. So again, protecting your night, night vision with that. There's the Kendo Plus headlight. 
pretty nice. Got a reflector, no side windows on this, but again, we got the reflective stripes on the tires. And then here's the Linneo in the rear. It's a little bit low on the trike. It'd be nice if it was up higher, but this keeps it more protected if you bump into a wall or something. So when I pull the brake levers, check this out. We get that bright mode, which is very fancy. Definitely appreciate that. You wanna be seen when you're a little bit lower to the ground. And while we're thinking about bumping things, this is about 29 and a half inches wide. So it's designed to fit through most doorways, uh, maybe into your garage or something like that. And we've got these rounded nuts on the end that, that might not, you know, may, maybe not quite as sharp as a rectangular thing. I, I think that's kind of nice. You know, they did purposely make this just so you can, it's a little bit more usable that way. Maybe you park it in your workshop or something. So back to the display, I'm gonna turn the lights off so the display is easier to see for us. And one of the, the cool secrets here is if you hold the minus key, we actually get walk mode. So the bike kind of moves itself like this, which could be very convenient if you just don't wanna ride, but you wanna use this like a powered wagon and it'll take your stuff for you and maybe climb up your driveway or something like that. That's pretty handy. And then the I button, if we double click that, we'll get into this settings menu. So it says display settings, click the I again to select it. We can adjust all kinds of stuff. So units, we could go to Imperial or metric, backlight brightness on the display, auto off. So how quickly it turns the trike off. The assist levels, we can change it from five if we wanted, go up to nine or down to three. So five's kind of the, it's a good balance of a few different choices, but not too many. And then view, power view, state of charge, percentage. That's what I was talking about. I like that it's percentage, more precise. Trip reset, wheel size 24, that's correct. Speed limit. So we actually can lower the speed limit from 20 if you're someone who wants to get better range or just, you know, this, it can feel a little unstable if you're going fast and you turn, the trike can kind of get up onto two wheels like this. And that's, it's not just this trike, it's, it's most trikes that are set up like this. So keep that in mind. It's nice you could adjust the speed and then uh, sensitivity on pedal assist, set a password, set the clock, go back. And then information, it's another menu here. We can see about our battery and the error codes. And that's about it. Go ahead and exit. That's the full walkthrough of the display. There's one other cool feature this display offers though. In addition to being sort of adjustable angle, there is a USB charging port on the bottom. Full size USB type A, it's pretty standard. I was told it's five volts, 500 milliamps, which isn't quite enough. To, you know, a lot of today's devices are like two amp, you know, that they're, you can do the fast charging like a smartphone or something. It'd be nice if this was like 600 milliamps or something, but yeah, I guess it's better than nothing. 500 milliamps is kind of standard. Um, and it's right there where you want it if you wanted to add some lights or maybe do a phone mount. So I think that's, that's a pretty good walkthrough of the trike. Maybe we should get on this thing and Go, go for an adventure. So the tire pressure is 35 to 65 PSI, which is a pretty good range. At the lower levels, you're gonna have that nice, comfortable, squishy feeling, but it's not gonna be as efficient. I'm here on, on the, the wood, on this boardwalk, and it's pretty quiet. The fenders aren't rattling. That 24 inch wheel diameter is nice and comfortable. And then here's kind of a tight area. I can navigate right through. pretty cool it's working out quite well it also seems really smooth and quiet uh, and I think they've they probably dialed in the BBSO2 mid drive motor to be a little bit you know more gradual in how it picks up which I think makes sense on a on a trike especially so let's do some off-road here's some gravel getting in that fender a little bit uphill turn no problem we cross the street here I even want to fit right on this this sidewalk no problem it's really got some get up and go once you use the throttle can even go off-road here 
see how it handles this. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it didn't even rattle going off the curb. That was fantastic. Shot of those Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes. I've been braking with one hand, no problem. You know, we are on the flats here, so it's pretty easy to do the no hand thing. Of course, with the trike, that's no problem. ahead and shift gears here. Take it up to three and we get a lot slower pedal cadence, really comfortable. Very responsive on the cadence sensor. I'm, I'm really impressed with this motor. You know, Evelo is not the only company that's choosing to use this, even though, again, the BBS02 has been around for so long. I think it just works really well. It's very proven. Let's see if we can fit through the, the poles here. Kind of that doorway test. No problem, no problem. With these taller fenders, I'm noticing some gravel and stuff kind of gets kicked up into the onto the deck back here. You know, they, for me again, it's like, these these don't look at quite as beautiful as the front fenders, but if they're really close and too tight, then they, they might make more rattling noises and the gravel might hit them. So I think it's kind of a trade off and at least they have fenders. I'm on a hill right here. So I wanted to do kind of a hill climb test. If I just hop on the bike, press the throttle, seems like no problem. I mean, it, it has a lot of power. When they set a, over a hundred newton meters of torque, I was like, wow, that's a pretty bold claim. Uh, some of the best motors out there from Bosch and Bros on stuff, they're kind of in the 85 or 90 newton meters. So even if this was 80 or 90, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, although, you know, the bike is heavier. So you do want that extra, you want the extra power. No problem climbing this thing. And then, as I mentioned before, you, you stop and you just lock the brake. These are some of the easiest brakes to lock. I've seen other designs where you, you'd, I'd have to take off my gloves and really be very intentional. And it seems to work just fine. I mean, there's no problem. You, you can lock the front and that, that disc brake right there that handles both wheels. Go ahead and unlock it. You can lock that into position. Just want to test that it, oh, look at that. So when I, when I turn that one, this one goes in the other direction and that sort of demonstrates the differential. That's kind of cool, huh? Yeah, so the brake and the motor is sending power or, or stopping both rear wheels. That's fantastic. Really fancy for a bicycle. go again no problem okay i'm gonna hand the camera off and we'll get the third person perspective and you can see this thing in action i wanted to do kind of a turning radius test here so i'm gonna take it down to the lower level just so if i hit the pedals we don't go go flying and um, actually shift down to a lower gear too and just kind of pedal look at that wow <laughs> And I think that's made possible in part because the differential, we're not skidding all over the place or, you know, putting too much pressure on the system. There we go. Feels great. I don't think too many people are be going up and down curbs, but it's actually like pretty easy on this thing. Uh, and if you want to get really wild, then you kind of get it up on the two wheels, sort of lean it side to side like that. That's what I've been talking about before. If you're going fast, you just want to be gradual with the turns, just like on any trike. But this one feels really stable. I think it's a great combination of narrow enough to get through doorways, but very stable and low center of gravity with the mid drive. And even the batteries are under the deck. And I wanted to show off those lights one more time too. So if I hold the light button, 
You got that headlight, kind of aim it up. And then the rear light, even though it's a little bit low, I love that it has the brake light activation. That's great, thank you so much. That was fun. There you go. Well guys, I think that's about it. It's really fun to look at a bike after several years of improvements. I think Yvelo is doing a great job with their compass. You do pay for it, you know, $42.99, and it is a little bit heavy and stuff, but if you're looking for that extra weight capacity and, and, and utility, and maybe you're someone who is concerned about balance, you want something that's easy to approach, I feel like this is one of the best options out there. Uh, Avello has like a really good, it's like a comprehensive four year warranty. They've got all kinds of upgrades. I mentioned the seat post suspension and they've got like a security kit and a commuter package and stuff, all kinds of really good accessories that are guaranteed to fit. I feel like they have good customer service. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to call that out. And as usual, I've got all the details back at electricbikereview.com. There's even a comparison tool. So you could look at, you know, the, the older version versus the new one or some of the other trikes. There's also a cool forum area. So you could chat with people who've bought from Yvelo and ask, you know, how, how did it go? What do you think? Is the bike working for you? Because I realize it is a lot of money. Um, I love you guys. I hope this helps you out. Hope you have fun out there and we'll see you next time.